Alléluia. We come today to recognize the Lord as our Savior. Alléluia. As our Redeemer. As our Multiplier. You see, there is a portion of the Lord that talks about Exodus. Exodus is a time of getting out of every limitation. When they were at Goshen, they were able to eat, but they were still in slavery. Hallelujah. And they were limited. They could only multiply within that limited area. But then the Lord came to them. He says, I want to exhort you. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, thank you for exhorting me. Thank you for exhorting me. Exalt me. Exalt me. Children of God, listen. God did not stop being the God because they were slaves. Hallelujah. He does not stop being your God because you are limited. But He is not showing His glory when you are limited. So he says, I'm going to raise up Pharaoh for myself so I can show my glory. Hallelujah. Because I do not want Pharaoh to limit what I want to do in your life. So for this reason, I need to break the limitation. I need to break the borders. I need to break the slavery. I need to break those things that limit you to advance. So for that reason, I want to raise you up. Break Goshen, get you out of Egypt, and get you into the promised land. Say, Lord... Exalt me, Lord. Exalt me. You know, there is a wrath that has to come inside your heart that is called the holy wrath. The wrath that tells you, I know I could no longer stay in that Goshen. I could no longer stay. You see, when they came into the land of Egypt, Goshen was a place that was of, of, of looking like favor, but it was not the favor of God. Hallelujah. Because God told to Abraham that I will bring your children out to the land I have promised unto you. It was not Goshen. It was not Goshen. It was not Goshen. Say, Lord, exalt me. Exalt me. Exalt me. The promise was not Goshen. Tell to somebody the promise was not Goshen. He did not say, I will establish you in Goshen. He did not tell you, I will establish you in Goshen. He has indicated a land that is called my promise. Say, my promise. Today, I will step into it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. It was not Goshen. It was a time when the enemy thought that all he can do is to seize them in a place that is limited so that we not see what God has promised to them, to the Father after and before them. But they came to a place where they saw the brightness of God. They saw the light of God. They saw the pillar of God. They saw the cloud of God. They say, ah, I'm coming out. Even if I need to divide the Red Sea, I'm coming out. I am a Rasa Priyata. For as I see, the Lord is leading me. There I go. The promise was not Goshen. And then the enemy has given them crumbs. The enemy has given them crumbs. Are you following? The enemy has given them crumbs. When Christ came, he told the same thing. He said, the bread is for the children. The bread said, God, your bread is for me, your child. The bread is for the children of God. But the enemy has given them crumbs. You have to come to a place where you have a holy wrath 
to say, my land is not Goshen. My place of abode is not Goshen. Where God has led me, there I will arrive. Wherever God has led me, there I will arrive. My place is not Goshen. That's why I, I, I relate to this song because the song says, Hear my prayer, O God. Attend to my cry. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. Lead me to that rock. You see, it was on that rock that Moses climbed on the mountain and he saw what God has to tell him. He saw what God has to tell him. He brought him in a place that was different. You cannot be in the valley and see the glory of God. So lead me, God, to the rock that is higher than us. My place is not Goshen. My promise is not Goshen. Even though he was a place of covering, he was a place of rest, he was not a place of promise. For you are a strong tower against the enemies. You are a strong tower against all my enemies. You are a strong tower against all of them. For this is the inheritance of the children of the Lord. And he told us that whatever tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For the promises of God, I yea and amen unto my life, unto your life, unto our lives, to the praise of his name. I bless you, Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that you are removing, Lord God, the veil, removing the limitation. Removing the limitation. Removing the limitation. Let me see with my eyes. Let me touch with my hands. Let me walk with my feet. Let me smell with my nose. Let me hear with my ears. Let me abound with my body. Let me eat with my mouth. Let me encounter it. For it is your will. For it is your way, God. And I bless you. And I bless you. Raos kebedeedeedeede. Mamba de ba anda ba de bede. I bless your name, Lord Jesus. Exalt me, God. Exalt me, God. Exalt me, oh my Lord. Exalt me, exalt me, exalt my family, exalt my children, exalt us, Lord God, exalt us. Exalt us. Hey, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless the name of the Lord God for all he does in our lives. We thank him because he is faithful. We thank him. Because you remain faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you can help us, please. Father, we bless you. We honor you today. 
We're going to go in our word. Hallelujah. Just turn down, turn down. Hallelujah. We're going to go in our word, which is uh, the, the, the following of our last Sunday. Who remember last Sunday word? Okay, you don't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Enforcing the promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Enforcing the promise. Hallelujah. And we're going to pick up from where we left uh, last Sunday and enter. Again, remember today is 31st. I know like in many places, many churches, whether in Africa, in Asia, in America, I, I know there are some type of celebration of uh, passing over. I understand. But you see, you don't want to pass over when you're actually stuck. You feel what I'm saying? If, for you to pass over, you have to get out of something. Uh, hallelujah. If you pass over, but you are not moving, your Passover ain't going to give over. Amen? So we want to go in the place where we acknowledge not only that God is bringing unto us a new added increase, but we also want to step into that increase. Hallelujah. We don't want to just speak it. We want to step into that increase. Last Sunday, by the grace of God, we have spoken about enforcing the promise. What God has promised you will not fall on you unless you enforce it. Amen. You see, the law is written, but the law does not do anything unless there is a law enforcement officer. Hallelujah. So the word of God, the promise of God that is given unto you are to be enforced. We're going to read from the book of 1 King. Amen. 1 King chapter 1. Verse 11 to 29. King James. Yes, for the King James Version. Thank you. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. Wherefore Nathan spake now. Remember, for this one, for those of you who don't know the word of God, let me explain to you this. In this time, in those days, there was a battle between um, the children of uh, David. And that battle was a rain battle. It was more spiritual and emotional. And it also, it was physical at times. There was a son of David whose name uh, Absalom, who has taken over the kingdom. He finally died, and the kingdom came back to the, to, to the father. But the thing is that uh, that spirit did not leave the family. Hallelujah. That spirit did not leave the family. So, but God has given a promise unto Bishiba, hallelujah, even though she was a, an, an outcast, hallelujah. She was not one of the wives of uh, uh, um of David, but yet God gave her a promise beyond the limitation. So when he gave her the promise, I mean to David gave the promise through the son of Bathsheba, David himself came to a place where he finally did not enforce that promise. Even Bathsheba did not enforce that promise. So while they had the promise in their hand, somebody was sitting on that promise. His name was Adonijah. So that day, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 1, we do see that the Adonijah rose himself, started gathering a, a, a donkeys and then a people around him, and then he was walking around making himself king. And they came to a place where they were feasting. And that day, they were, as I would say, it was like in the United States when we talk, they were talking about uh, um, the president, uh, how they call it? Uh, when the president-elect is being... Uh, um, uh, the swearing in, hallelujah, the swearing in. So in the United States, when they have a president, they have a president-elect, amen? So the president-elect, when he comes in to take office, they swear him in, hallelujah. But the day they swear me in and he enters the Oval Office, that day it is sealed, hallelujah. So they were swearing in Adonijah. For the word of God says that all the, the, the host, the captain of the host, hallelujah, uh, uh, Joab and his brother Abishai, they all came, and the priest Abiatar, they also came, hallelujah, and they swore in Adonijah. And they say, God save the king Adonijah. But Adonijah was not the one who God has promised. Hallelujah. Even though in the, in the spectrum of life, he was coming before uh, Solomon, he was not the promise of God. As I said last Sunday, according to men, you have the birthright. And the birthright is not given to the little brother. It's given to the big brother. 
But you see, when God steps into your plate, he messes up things up. Hallelujah. He just, he, the Bible said that his ways are not as our ways. So he flipped everything over. He says, okay, that outcast, that lady, I'm going to take a son and put the son on the now, as I said last Sunday, they were looking at her certainly as an outcast. Because remember, she was coming with, a, um, how is his name? Um, and David, hallelujah, she's committing adultery with David. And after committing adultery with David, her husband got killed. Even though she may not have done anything, but in the mind of the people, they're like, you were together. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So regardless, they look at her as an outcast. And the Bible says, go ahead now. Tell us what the Bible says. Verse 11. Wherefore, Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, mm -hmm. the mother of Solomon, saying, Has thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggit, doth, doth reign? And David, our Lord, knoweth it not? Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So the prophet uh, came on to her. He says, hear me. Let me give you counsel to do what? To save. Now listen, there is a save life that is spiritual. But this one it was not spiritual. This one, it was physical life. Hallelujah. She didn't if she wouldn't have moved into that specific time because they were already gathering and singing and praising the king Ado Niger. If she was not moving at that time and then thinking that the promise was already spoken by God and it would happen anyway, she would have been dead. Hallelujah. One of the things that I call new age is they tell you, they say, well, if this is for me, we happen anyway. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Because throughout the word of God, the land, the, the, the garden was for Adam and Eve. It didn't happen anyway. Hallelujah. They got kicked out. Amen. For the word of God says, hold fast. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes, he comes to steal. So if he wants to seal your promises, he will not tarry. He will not delay. He will do it. That's why you cannot simply speak the promise and sit down. God told unto Moses, he said, tell the people of Israel in the book of Exodus 14, 14. He said, what are thou crying? Get up. Tell them, get up and move. So that day the promise was spoken. The promise was for the son of David, Solomon. That it shall surely sit on the throne. But regardless of the promise, somebody was hijacking it. Hallelujah. Somebody was hijacking it. And then worse, the person who hijacked that promise was ready to just finish with their lives. Continue. Verse 13, go and get thee into, and get thee in unto King David, and say unto him, This not thou, my Lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there, with the king, I also will come in after thee and confirm thy words. Verse 15. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, My lord, Thy swear, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, continue, continue, continue. Verse 18. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth, 
And now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. And he had slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and had called all the sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant had he not called. Hallelujah. Amen. Adonijah was the brother eventually of Solomon, at least by father. The Bible says he called all the sons of David, except Solomon. Why? Because Solomon, he knew, amen, that Solomon was the promise. He didn't want to have somebody into the feast interjecting or objecting to his enthronement. Hallelujah. So he put him aside. Let me tell you something. When you look at the word of God, the word of God stipulates and clarifies that David did tell unto Bathsheba that Solomon will reign after him. But you understand it was not David's will. Amen. It was not the will of David for the son to reign after him. It was the will of God. Now, let me explain unto you something that is important. When God tells you something, or God promised you something, and that promise comes through a man, it is your duty to enforce that promise until you see and touch it. Are you following? This is how the enemy works. The enemy can deceive you. Remember, he's a deceiver. The enemy can deceive you to tell you, oh, it's not a big deal. Just give it to God. No. What God said it is for me, it means it is. Hallelujah. What God has stamped and said this is for you, it means it is for you. So when the enemy comes and then start now hijacking it, you cannot simply sit down and say, I leave it to God. Because that day would have she, she would have said, I leave it to God. She would have met God that day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When it comes to the promises of God, it is your duty to enforce it. Let me tell you. When God promised to the children of Israel that we enter the, the land, when they arrive, did the people of the land say, come in, see them? Hallelujah. On their way to the land, there was a wall of Jericho. Did the king of Jericho say, ah, because your God has spoken, please pass through, go? See, they did they even asked to the king Baal to say, ah, we want to go through Moab in just to, to, to see uh, the, the king of Moab and the Moabite. We want to go through the land. What did they say? They said, no. The reason why the children of Israel had to fight to take over what belongs to them. It was, not, it was not because God was not with them. It was rather because God has told them to do so. And notice, from every word that God had given, even the day, when, when, when was man created? When did God make man? On the sixth day, it was what? Friday, right? It was the sixth day. It's Friday. On that Friday, what happened in the New Testament? Jesus Christ died. He was crucified. Right? Now you understand this is not just random coincidence. You get it? God made men on Friday. He gave them the power to rule over and to dominate over the earth. Hallelujah. And on that Friday, the enemy has also come, taken Jesus Christ and put him on the cross. Hallelujah. But notice something. While the enemy was busy attempting to throw the ways of God, he had to do something, God, meaning Christ, he had to do something physical to take back what the enemy has stolen. Are you what I'm saying? Even Christ has to die physically in order to take what was stolen. Does it make sense? When God told to Adam and Eve, you will have this. You will have this. I give you all those things. They still had to stand against the enemy in order to receive. The Bible says, resist the devil. And 
And the reason why he flees from you is not just that he takes away and goes. No, he flees because he does not, he cannot take in order to steal and go. Hallelujah. When David lost all the, tough, the, 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 the property, when the children of David, the wives of David, they were in the land. The enemy came in, took everything and went out. The Bible said when they arrived after the fight, now notice, they were in the battle and they believe, or should I say, because you think that you are in the battle, therefore God has your back. You have still to watch out that your promise are not being exposed to the enemy. You do not let and you cannot let your promise being taken away and simply say, Lord, <laughs> hallelujah. If God did not tell this is for you, that's something else. But when God tells this is for you, it becomes a command. Are you following? When God says this is for you, it becomes a command for you to enter into it. When the children of Israel were spoken unto by the Lord to say, I will bring them into the new land, into the promised land, and they will get into it. It becomes from them a command. Now notice, when they did not want to go in, was God happy about it? Hallelujah. When God told them go in and they did not want to go in, he was not glad about it. Because whatever God promised unto you, you are giving the duty to enforce it and to let it happen. Let's read. Bring it back. Yeah. Verse, and, give, me, give me verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, My lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the reasons why you do not enforce the promise of God is unbelief. Are you following? Unbelief will prevent you to enforce the promises of God. If she did not believe that what God has said or what David said, or if Nathan himself, who received that word, did not believe that finally that was the will of God, he wouldn't have done anything. Hallelujah. If he did not believe that he was not Adonijah, he was himself Solomon, he wouldn't have done anything. The children of Israel, when they were given the promise and they told, and the Lord told them, enter the promise, the reason why they did not enter, it was for unbelief. Hallelujah. The Lord told them, go, I will fight for thee. When they went, they saw it. They could not really believe that they would be able to overcome what they saw in the land. But the Lord is not asking you whether you believe or not. Because the strength is not in you. Amen? The strength, tell to somebody the strength is not in me. He said this way. He said not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord. This is how the Spirit of God works. I will give you a picture. The Bible says that God is spirit, right? And we don't see him, right? If it is by the Spirit of the Lord, what it means, I'll give you a picture. I'm going to give you a picture. The enemy is standing over there. For the enemy to stop you, he needs to see what he is stopping. Am I right? For the enemy to stop what you're doing or to stop your promise or whatever, he needs to see it. But since God is spirit, when you are under the shadow of God, you are no longer the one walking. Amen? It is God moving. But since God is spirit, the enemy cannot see the spirit. You following? So since you are under God, you are going through the enemy without being seen. Hallelujah. You are spoiling the enemy. You're getting out without being seen. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I call it undercover. 
He said, by my spirit. It means he has the ability to thwart and then to divert. He has the ability to take down all those things that the enemy will do against thee simply because he told you, I promise unto you this word, this thing, this thing, this thing. But it is your duty to enforce it by believing, by working into it, by seizing it. In the case of David, thank you. In the case of David, you will notice that she wake up, she, she got up, and she went to David. And then she says, my Lord, have you not swore unto me that your son, my, um, your, your, your son will be after thee, your servant Solomon? You will notice something. In our day-to-day -day life, somebody can give you a promise. If you don't identify whether that promise comes from the word of God, from the will of God, you will let that promise go simply because you do not want to bother to ask the person. You feel what I'm saying? But if God has spoken it, it is not about you asking, it's about you enforcing what he said. Does it make sense? Because remember, the strategy of the enemy works this way. He says, I will take the, the example again of a David. If David would have told unto Bathsheba out of his own will, then it means he has the will to give to whoever he wants the one to be king. Does it make sense? But in this case here, it was not David's will who told Bathsheba that you're going to be having your son be a king. In this case here, it was again the will of God. So when the prophet Nathan came to her, he did not remind her what was David's will. He reminded her what was the will of God. Amen. When he reminds her what is the will of God, then he tells her, go into the chamber. You will see. In the case of Esther, it was not God necessarily who told Esther that they will be delivered. But they still have to move into something in order to have deliverance. You feel what I'm saying? So in that case, they told Esther, go and get deed to the king. For you don't know if you were made for a, a time like this. You see, the word did not say that uh, you are made for this time like this. Uh, am I right? The word said, you don't know whether you were made for this time like this. So that was not the promise. It was an opportunity in which she had the ability to drop in, to step in. And she did change something. But she understood it was not a promise. And she said, I don't know if I go to the king. Am I? Da. But this is something else. In the case of Bathsheba, it was not about if I go to the king. In the case of Bathsheba, when she heard what God said, she said, if I don't go to the king, I will die. The other one said, if I go to the king, I will die. But Bathsheba said, if I don't go to the king, I will die. Are you following? When it is the promise of God, it's not about the obsessed. No. <laughs> it's Hallelujah. God said, you give to me period point final. She is not going to make a plea. You have to make it different. God said, this is this. I always take the law of man, which is much more lesser. Than the law of God. But if in the law of man you can enforce, let me give you an example. When the king, I say the king, the judge writes the order because somebody owes you some money. When the person owes you the money, is there money for the person? I repeat again. When somebody owes you money, is that money for that person? But you understand, even though it is your money, that person who does not want to give, no matter how you call, he will not give. Now, if the person now, you go to the court, and the court now gives you a court order, 
to say, okay, since the person does not give it to you, I give you the authority and the power to seize his car. If you know what I'm saying. Now, with that court order, you are able to enforce the law in order to receive your due. Does it make sense? Now, you will not go yourself. You will take what we call the enforcement officer, the law enforcement officer. Why do they enforce it? Because one, it is written. Hallelujah. And two, it belongs to you. So in the mind of God for you, the word of God is the law over the earth and over the heaven. And that law said, I give you this promise. You cannot negotiate it. You already have the order. You already have the court order, which is the word of God. When God tells you you will not be at a tail, what does it mean? Hallelujah. He did not say you may not be at the tail. He did not say you may be at the head. Hallelujah. So when I see those openings, happenings in my life, and I see them contrary to what God has said, there are two reasons. My own lack of discipline. Hallelujah. Or the attempt of the enemy to steal from me. Either way, it is my prerogative to advance, to step in and enforce that promise because it is God who said so. So Esther, she said, if I go to the king, I will die because it was not the promise of God. She was in an opportunity to move in. Amen? But even there, she knew how to move in. How much more when it is the promise of God? Are you following? When it is just an opportunity, she knows, like, it's like a, the, 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 the Syro Syro Phoenician. When she came to the Lord Jesus and she said, please, my daughter is uh, possessed with a demon. Come, do something. The Lord told her, the promise is not for you. <laughs> She, she said, I don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, I don't care. However you say, when you finish talking, you are here, you will do. Amen? So how much more when the promise is for you? That's why the Lord said that the children of the world are wiser than the children of the light. Why? Because they know that in the promise of God, he has promised rain and sun. Amen. So they do not need to obey God. They just needed to trust that what he already said, even though the Bible said that they knew, but they suppressed the truth. Amen. So they know that God has made the sun and the rain. So they know with certainty that if the plant and the rain falls in, it will give the crops. So they function upon that, ex uh, 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 that, that establishment of God in order to receive harvest. But the difference is, God said, you will dominate over the earth. He said, go and multiply. Hallelujah. He said, possess the land. He says, rise. So you out now to tell to yourself, Lord, on this throne, on this territory, on this business, on this family, on this household, it is you who said, that it is good for this, for this, for this. But whatever I see that is contrary to what you have said, I will not simply say, let the will of God be done. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the will of God to be done, it is the promise. Does it make sense? The will of God to be done, it is the promise. Solomon your son 
shall be king after you. But the devil takes Adonijah, sits on the throne, uh, on the uh, um, uh, be, uh, enthroned king. I mean, he was not still sitting on the throne. Amen. Being enthroned king, Bathsheba, she cannot simply sit down. Because the same day they were enthroning Adonijah, it was the same day that Nathan came. And he said, hear me. For if you do not move, hallelujah, if you do not move, the promise that you have received will go with you and your son to the grave. Tell to somebody, move in the name of the Lord. 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 It is not about whether or not the enemy is, is wanting. God has spoken. And that word, I am in duty in order to enforce it. Hallelujah. If I am in duty in order to enforce it, I must enforce it. Let me explain you something you will understand correctly. Sometimes the promises of God helps a person to see his limit, to see his wrecked, uh, God, uh, wreckness, wreckness. Help me with my English. I, I told you, with my English, you will have it in dictionary. <laughs> eh? Wreckedness. Somebody who's wrecked. Hallelujah. Wretchedness. If you're watching, tell me what it is. <laughs> so, it's not about the promise of God. Re let, me, let me say that again. The promises of God do not depend on you. It depends on the faithfulness of God. For if you are faithful, God remains. If you are unfaithful, God remains faithful. Hallelujah. It does not depend on you. When he told to Abraham, I will get your children out. Did he know that the children would be recalcitrant? Oh, I will say that again. <laughs> Stubborn. Did he know it? Hallelujah. He knew. That their children will not listen. See, the day he was on the throne, uh, uh, on the mountain with um, uh, Moses, that same day, he was giving the Ten Commandments. You will notice something. God told to Moses, go, for they are doing exactly what I'm writing not them to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it does not depend on you. When you look at what Bathsheba did, do you believe that uh, she deserved to have any promise from God? No, honestly. Before any mind that is uh, correct, do you truly believe that Bathsheba and David's son should be king? Can a child of an adulteress be a king? Hallelujah. Can she? Uh, can the child? Can he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me break it down because you get to understand this one. God calls us to live in holiness. Amen. This is non-negotiable. The promises of God affect your well-being on earth. Does it make sense? So you can still be like a, a Solomon. He got a promise, but we all know he was a, a <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. He has how many? 1,000. I don't know how his thing worked, but that thing, he probably had like an AI inside. <laughs> Am I right? Because a human being, you function like this. Or, uh, that's why David was too old. 
Because the Bible says, David now was very old, but he was how old? He was 70. 70 years old is not very old. 70 years old is elder. But he was functioning so much that the, even his body. <laughs> Let me tell you. So Solomon was not a straight in the path of God. He had the heart of God, but he did not do the things of God correctly, did he? You have to make the difference between the promise, hallelujah, for you to be able to be established on earth and the word of life to get you into the heaven. Hallelujah. The word of God talks about the wholesome word of Christ. Meaning, you have to seize what belongs to you. You have to eat out of it. But you have also to keep the word of God to live. So it did not call us to only be holy. Uh, am I right? It did not call us to only be holy. While you are holy, you are also called to possess. Does it make sense? So as you walk in the fullness of the word of God, you possess what he told you you will possess. And let me tell you, the promise that God gave to David was not spiritual, even though there was a spiritual connotation. You cannot attribute what God has told you you will have in a physical, in a spiritual. Sometimes people will pray saying, Oh Lord, even if I have nothing, I will praise you. God say, oh, okay, you gotta be broke. <laughs> Amen. Because you affirm to God that even if you have nothing, you will praise Him. So what? What do you want Him to bother? Uh, how do you make the prayer? Oh Lord, all I need is only you. Mm, okay. The Bible said that uh, we do with our lips, but the heart is not there. Because God who knows your heart, he knows that uh, you need rice. You feel what I'm saying? And it will not be offended because you ask him, Lord, give me rice. If he's your good father, he will not be offended simply because you ask him rice. Now, you cannot also act like a, a pimp. <laughs> I call it spiritual pimp. Amen. You only go to God for give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to also have a balanced spirit that know and knows and knows how to exalt him first for who he is. But a good father he is will not let you die of hunger. So enforcing the promise depends on you. Why? Because you are fulfilling the will of God. Are you following? The promise of God that he gives unto you are, are waiting for your manifestation so that uh, you take and enforce them. Let me give you an example. Coming from the book again. Solomon, your son, is supposed to be king. Bathsheba, I don't want you to go pray and fast. Are you following? Somebody let me ask you. I always said, you must pray and fast. But the day God said, move, it is to move. Solomon, your son, is supposed to be king. What I want you to do is to go and to enforce it. Now, as you go, you can pray. Amen. But you notice, until she moved, 
it wouldn't have been no change. Hallelujah. Regardless of the will of God, the Bible says it is the will of God that no one be lost, that all be saved. Is all be saved? Is the sins of men prevented Christ to die on the cross? Didn't he promise that, that he would die on the cross? When you read the book and the and the, 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 and the, the come sir, the whole testament, you see our cry will die on the cross. When you read in Exodus, he gave the picture of that. Take the blood of the lamb and put it on the door spot. And what happened? When you put on the door spot, the angel of death will not enter that house. And how you put it on the top, on the left, on the right. Is that the right? Is that the cross? Hallelujah. But the children of Israel, they were not always obedient to God. But did that prevent God to fulfill what he said he would do? So the promise is up to you to enforce it. Now, if you don't know, some of you may not know, you might ask yourself, but what did God promise to me? Well, first thing first, I always say it is the word of God. It is called a testament. If you have a father who died, and that father left you a testament, what they call the last will, if in that will, they say you will have the one million dollar that he has left into the bank account. By your cousin. Hallelujah. Who is not the son of your father. Goes to associate with the witches and the wizard of the villages. And I start casting spell. And then you're thinking, well, if it is for me, it will happen. <laughs> Let me tell you, it won't happen. Remember, the promise of God carries a command inside. Hallelujah. The promise of God carries a command inside. It is your duty to fulfill what he wants or promised to you. When he says, leave, it is your duty to leave. When he say prosper, it is your duty to prosper. Two reasons. The first is by doing so, you are demonstrating your good works so that people can praise your father who is in heaven. For he says, let your good work be seen, be made known of men. Hallelujah. You agree with me? That when you are in only the closet and you pray there, which is the will of God also, you agree with me that this will not be sin of men. Does it make sense? There is one that is for you, for your personal development, so that you are well built into the word and you are not moved at every wind of doctrine and you are following the path of Christ until heaven. Amen? That is for you to pray so you fall not into temptation. But the will and the promise of God for you to advance, for you to possess, he has spoken of it. When the day arrives, you enforce it. So the first is the will, the word. The word of God, which is our will tells us that if you continue in the ways of God, if you choose this day, life, you will leave. But when you leave, you will be at the head and not at the tail. <laughs> if I'm on the line, 
And they told me, ah, when you arrive at the place, just go straight at the cashier, at the, what was that? At the decks. And then you arrive, you see a line. What do you do? You agree with me that you will not just be on the line waiting that the line goes on. Because you have received a word that gave you the authority to skip the line. So the confidence that you have is in what you were told. So when you arrive, you see the line, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, uh, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. And people will look at you like, oh, what are you doing? Excuse me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. When you arrive at the, at, the, uh, at, the, at the decks, because you were already told to arrive there, your name is also written there. He say, when you go, you will find a colt tied by the crossroad. It did not say when you go, you will seek for a <laughs> Hallelujah. When you go, you will find, not seek. It will be clear. You will identify it. And you will know this one. My name is on Neat. That's how you know it's a promise of God. Because it does not come from a place of, oh Lord, is that your will? If it is your will. <laughs> But because if it is your will, <laughs> hallelujah. But Lord, I know your will. I know you have told me. And most of the time, God will speak to you in dreams. Most of the time. Because most of the time, if he speaks to you physically, you won't believe. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. He will come in your dreams. He will speak to you in your dreams. And then, after he spoke to you in your dreams, you see that that dream correlates with the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God said, you will be at the head. You dream, you see suddenly somebody come take you, and put you at the front. Amen? And then, you go to church, you arrive, and the preacher preach, you will be at the head. How many confirmation you need? <laughs> Hallelujah. You, at that point, it is no longer waiting on, but it is enforcing what God has said. But what is for me, I will enforce it. Your name is written to the cashier at the desk. While you squeeze yourself through the line and you arrive, suddenly the person at the desk says, uh, what's your name? Abanda. Oh, Mr. Abanda, uh, okay, okay, hold on. This is it. Now, all the people who are looking at you, what you doing, what you doing, they're like, hmm. <laughs> they all, they all, they, they see the work. <laughs> they see the goodness of God. Many of them be waiting on the line. And I'm sure some also are waiting with the promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the word tells you skip and go, it means skip and go. The book of Mark is one of the books that explain unto us how God works on what we how God works on what we call the fast lane. When you read the book of Mark, you will notice that in almost everything, it comes always immediately. When you read Mark and you read Matthew, the same account about a miracle. In Matthew, they will say, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. But in Mark, and this happened, and immediately, this happened. So the book of Mark is known as being the fast lane. 
in that book, when the Lord Jesus stood on the boat with the disciple, the Bible says immediately they were at the seashore. Hallelujah. What does it tell me? It tells me that there are moments, places in the spiritual where God wants to put you on the fast. Uh, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Israel, they were stuck for how many years? 430. When the Bible counts, it says 430. For 430, that's how many generations, according to the word of God? Four generations. Because he told to Abraham, it will be four generations. Amen? 400 years. How many grandchildren do you have? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because by the time you are 70, you can have two great children. 400 years. If you still live, which you will not. <laughs> Amen. But your great, 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 great children will be still in the land. And God said, they spent more than 400 years. Listen carefully. They spent so long a time that the promise God made unto Abraham, for I swear by myself that I will visit your children again and deliver them. 400 years, they were so stuck that the belief system was that they believed firmly that was their destiny. There are things you try. You try. You know, you know that this one, it is God who called you to do this. And you push. And, you, and the more you push, the more you stuck. And you're thinking, that might be the end of it. And the more you press, the more you stuck. Let me tell you something. In the mind of God, he was developing in them the ability to build a nation. Because when they finished building all the pyramids of Pharaoh, they developed skills. Hallelujah. They developed skills. And when they finished develop their skills, God did not trash it. God utilized those skills and build a nation with that. But you will see, the day he came to deliver them, how was it? It was tough, but when they came out, it was immediately. Are you following? They were stuck. He was hard. They were pushing. They were trying. They, they were pushing. They were trying. They, they, they were, you see, you, you push, you try. You push, you try. You push, you try. And you yourself, you know that this one, it is God. Your spirit, your soul, your body, your mind, your heart, even your toes tells you this one is God. But when you have finished everything, you are tired, and how what do you have? Nothing. But God says, when you enforce a promise, the reason why you enforce it is because there is resistance. The Bible says, when you go in the house of the strong man, what do you do? That brings us to our second way of enforcing the promise. Physically, you must take it, work in it, and take it. But when you see resistance, remember, a word, cast a word. Remember that. If the word of God has been spoken over you, and the word of the enemy is spoken over you, and you believe the word of the enemy, the word of God will be cast. Does it make sense? 
For the word of God says in the book of Mark chapter 7, that because of the tradition of man, the word of God is choke. Are you following? Are you following? So the word of God in you can be null and non-effect if the things of man have taken over that word of God in you. In reverse, the things that men have made and caused in you will be annihilated if the word of God takes over. A word cast a word. Now you got to choose which one cast which one. Amen. God's word. So at that point, the second point, when you are enforcing the promise and you see resistance, that's when now you use the word of God to cast down imagination. To cast down. Now those imaginations start with your own imaginations. Because in your imagination, you will be thinking, ah, this is certainly what I'm supposed to have and to be. And in your imagination, you will accept the limitation. But you must come to the place to cast down that imagination out of yourself and say, this is not where God has called me to be. When you start casting your own imagination that are not aligning with the will of God, it is already you yourself entering that promise. Now, you arrive. Like in the case of David, again, the prophet tells to Nathan, uh, Nathan the prophet tells to um, Bathsheba, go speak. And when you go speak, I will come and confirm the word. Let me explain unto you. You cannot leave a way and outside Hallelujah. From the world. The Bible says that you are not from the world, but you live in the world. It says, for I do not take you out of the world, but I let you in the world. Hallelujah. So what does it mean concerning the promises? When Solomon was to build the temple, um, David, his father, has gathered all the tools for him to build it, right? But they were still missing. Amen? And what happened? It was the king of, was that uh, Imram? Amen? King Imram, who brought all the cedar from Lebanon that Solomon needed in order to complete and to achieve the work of God. Hallelujah. So what does it mean? In the world, you must also understand how to make connection. Let me explain again. Bathsheba, she had connection with Nathan. Are you know what I'm saying? Even though she was the wife or living with the king, this by itself did not give her the promise. Does it make sense? But a connection with Nathan helped her remember that promise and step into that promise. If she did not have connection with Nathan, she would have been stuck with the... That doesn't make sense. God can bring in your life people not necessarily of faith. But there's people like, they're like Imran. They know where the cedar is. Do you believe that God did not make the cedar? Do you think that uh, he forgot to tell to David to have it? He calls David to have all the tool gathers. But he left the cedar out. And it is somebody who's not at all from Israel. Hallelujah. He has no covenant with God. But God has written your name in his heart. Because he is made by God. Hallelujah. But now you will notice. 
this still, at the time of the building of the temple, it was not because Imran was a good friend of David that therefore he said, okay, I'm going to send the thing in. No. Solomon has to make the request. That's the second part. Ask, and it shall be given. First, you know this is yours. That's what she knew. Bathsheba. She enforced it. But she did not enforce it. With, you know, there was a way when she came before the, the king, she bowed. Amen? So you worship. You worship God. But after she bowed, she did not be crying. Hallelujah. She did not come before the king. Ah, I don't know. I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. Oh. No, 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 no. Initil. Some, say, say to somebody, initil. <laughs> it's initil. Even God told you, Moses, why are the children of Israel crying? I gave you a promise. Get out of Egypt and go in the promised land. You see the Red Sea and you're crying. But the intent of God is that he wants to use the Red Sea to demonstrate his power. But, but who made the Red Sea? When he made the Red Sea, was Moses there? So why God did not tell to the rest in part? Uh, are you following? He has, God has no limitation. But he decides to implicate you into the activity of the power and the glory. And then you are sitting. Say, I refuse to sit. I refuse to sit. He said, Moses, get your road. He did not say, get my road. Get your road. And then stretch out your hand and put into the Akabashabra Sakata. By that Red Sea, what is preventing you to advance? What is preventing you to possess? What is preventing you to enter? You got to tell. To the enemy, no, I'm tired of you. I, I'm, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you, the devil. You will no longer come in my life and twist and tweet and then do those things. And then pit. no, I am tired of you because God has promised me to enter and I take my road. I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. of God you have to have what I call again a holy rough this is for me this is not for you devil whatever you do today the word of God says it is my exodus For how long? For how long will you sit idle like Bathsheba? No! For how long will you allow Adonijah to sit on the throne that was not promised to him? It was not the name of Adonijah. God said your son Solomon. He did not say your son Adonijah. Adonijah, why are you sitting in my promise? Listen, people of God, you do not go to talk to Adonijah because the heart of Adonijah will not change. You talk to the one who has made the promise. Are you following? He has the power to make it happen even in the now. Adonijah. 
Your name was not written. In this land, your name was not written. In my finances, your name was not written. In my household, your name was not written. In my marriage, your name was not written. The day I made covenant with God, you were not there. Hallelujah. And because you were not there, I could not allow myself to be idle and look at you. Take still what God did not give unto you. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent will take it by force. Let me explain to you one of the mysteries in the kingdom. When the enemy is active to take away what belongs to you, he also makes you silent. Adonijah was active to take away what belongs to Solomon. But in the same time, he calls them to be silent. When the word of God says, let, 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 me, let me put it in those two ways. The first is the Old Testament of the kingdom, and the second is the New Testament of the kingdom. Those two, you have to take it by force. You must move. In the case of Solomon, he had to move. When the Lord Jesus came, he said, you must move. So the enemy's strategy is to gather all of himself. And then calls you to be silent. No. No. Because Bathsheba, she looked at what was going on into that feast. She understood this one was not from God. No. This is not from God. But she was silent. Are you following? And because she was silent, they were feasting. They were continuing feasting. And but listen, they were feasting with what? With the property of Solomon. Are you following? Because the bulls and the cow that they killed, it was not for them. You feel what I'm saying? They were utilizing the property, the tools of Solomon. That was due to be given unto Solomon. But you see, sometimes you yourself, you may not see that the enemy is taking your promise. Or you may not realize how bad you're going to die the day he takes and sits on your throne. So he had to take somebody outside of the King house. Are you following? Bathsheba. She lived with uh, King David for a good time. Amen? And as I said, in the case of Bathsheba, she did not have the same limit as Esther. In the case of Esther, there was a principle you cannot simply enter into the presence of the king like this without being invited. In the case of Bathsheba, it was not the same principle. She can enter at any time. But regardless, she was not able to enter in and to seize what belongs to her. He has to be a third person, Nathan, to come in and to remind her to say, but you got to remember the word that the Lord has promised to you. Hallelujah. You must remember the word that the Lord has promised to you. First and foremost, he didn't, now, now, here's the reality. The reality is that most of you over here came from somewhere, amen? Most of you over here were not born in this nation. Do you 
Bible believe that God told to Abraham, get thee out of thy own land, out of thy own father's house, so you will go in the land where I will show you broke. So you will go in the land where I will show you lost. Do you really believe that he left where he was to go in another place so that uh, he will leave the same misery that he was in where he was? I always say it. Put in correlation what God does in your life. Because the same thing repeats. The same thing is of the word of God. You have been left out of your country to be brought into another country. It is not for you to remain at the tail. For proof. Your one dollar. Count for hundreds. In many other countries. Let me explain unto you. When he brought them in the land where the milk and honey, uh, and the, the, the milk and the honey were, there were also giants. Hallelujah. So the giants of the United States are not your concern. Are you following me? The giants around your family are not your concern. Are you following? The giant around your marriage, that's not your concern. Are you following? The giant around your children, that's not your concern. Your concern is that even if Adonijah is feasting, today I can dethrone him. Hallelujah. Say, even if Adonijah is feasting, today I dethrone him. I dethrone him in the name of Jesus Christ. I dethrone him in the name of Jesus Christ. I dethrone you, Adonijah, now in the name of Jesus Christ. I dethrone you now in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to understand. God did not call you to be silent. He called you to raise up your voice. He said, whatever I have told you in the secret, raise it up. Because by your testimony, you have defeated the devil. Enforce the promise. Enforce the promise. Have a seat. I was speaking with uh, with my mom, and I was telling her. I said, "You see, the word of God tells me." Honor your father and your mother. And I told her, I said, you see, that's the word of God. And I'm out to do that. But I asked her a question. I said, did I leave you to marry you? <laughs> I said, I did not leave you to marry you. I left you to marry my wife. And I asked her a question. I said, if you being with my father and my father was taking care more of his mother than you, tell me what you would say. She said, that's not right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then she told me this. She said, my son, for a norm, a, a norm, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah! For for a man, okay, in uh, uh, um, say is a comes a French, amen. For a man to prosper, now this is my mama who is Catholic, okay. She does rosary. <laughs> she said, for a man to prosper, 
He must make sure that his wife is pleased. I say, ah, don't you know it? And she said, my son, listen to me carefully. For a man to prosper, he must make that the heart of his wife is pleased. Now, the reason why I say she's Catholic is because in the Catholic church, most of the time, they don't really read the Bible. Okay, they don't really read the Bible most of the time. But she was speaking the word of the word. And then she told me, I have a sister, I have a niece that she married a guy that I knew in the past when we were young. And that man, his testimony was bad. So the day I heard that he married my niece, I said, alas. <laughs> because... Yeah. You, you can marry everything except that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. But my mother told me something that really touched me. She said that man, he came in the house. He was still courting my niece. When he arrived, anytime he arrived, he always come with something in his hand for the people of the house. And one day, there was a cousin from the village who was sitting there. He arrived and you look at that man. He said, who is this? And my mother said, ah, this is my little, uh, uh, my grand nephew. So that man took out of his pocket a bill of, uh, we, we, in French we say 1,000 French CFA, which is roughly $2. He takes it and gives to the man. When my mother saw it, she said, this one, the way he's broke, he's able to understand how to stretch his hand and to open his heart. And she told to my niece, marry this man. He will be able to take care of you. And the day you marry him, his life will change. Meanwhile, my niece, she had big people with big car who were running after her. And my mom said, no, there's people. Don't be after them. Don't marry any of them. Marry this one. By that one, he was broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was broke. But he was able to have a heart that was open. So she listened to my mother and she married him. Today, his life has changed, prosper. And she told me, she said, he is making his wife always glad. He's making her, getting her things. It does not mean they have no problem. But he understood the principle that my mom told her. And he started doing those things. And my mom now told me, she said, because there are marriages that will bring you into heaven. But there are marriages that will bring into hell. Hallelujah. So the person that you marry can make a big difference in your life. And when she said that, I said, mom, what are you saying? It's not just you. It's the word of God. And I notice one thing. Now, listen very carefully because I want, I want to break this one in, in, in the right divided word of God so you understand the difference. God did not condone the sin of David. Hallelujah. Meaning with him and Bathsheba. He never condoned it. However, one thing that David did was a turnaround of his life. Hallelujah. Listen very carefully. David, let me repeat again. God did not condone the sin of David. However, because of the turnaround, 360 turnaround of David, when he had a child with Bathsheba, without Bathsheba, he wouldn't have had a kingdom. Does it make sense? I want to break it down rightly so you don't confuse it. One, God did not condone what? The sin of David. He so condemned it that the child of David, Bathsheba, did die. Hallelujah. But there is something God does in the life of somebody is when the person repents from his sin. God is able to transform your past, amen, your present, and your future. And because of how David was able to 
to understand, to function with Bathsheba, he was able to have a kingdom after him. Does it make sense? Let me again. Some promises for you who are single. Your promises must come through what we call the lane of multiplication. Let me explain a little bit. To back down, when in the United States they had an issue with the COVID, they said they will give to people money to sustain them. And they said those who had more children, we have more money, right? So literally, the, the, the blessing, because it was a blessing, that blessing came based on the number of your children. You had one, you were multiplied by one. You had two, you were multiplied by two. Are you following what I'm saying? So literally speaking, God said that there are things that will come in your life based upon your responsibilities. Does it make sense? And one of the responsibilities is a household responsibility. Does it make sense? When that responsibility is held, I tell you, there are heaven that works on your behalf against the activities of the enemy. Bathsheba, she was not the preferred wife from God to David. But because of the activity that they have put together, God has used even the child, Solomon, to bring the kingdom up. Are you following? I, I, I pray that you follow what I'm saying. So when my mother told me that, I said, Mom, you are truly speaking the word of God. But do I know it? Yes. But yet, that resonated in my mind like the oracle of God that I have heard for the first time. Are you following? That resonated in my mind and I remembered Nathan speaking to Bathsheba. From all my life, I never heard my mom say that. From all my life. So automatically, what did I do? I put it in practice. I gave to my wife. I said, baby, 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 um, please, um, uh, uh, go, go to the bank, take $100 to do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Listen carefully. It was Friday. It wasn't Friday or Thursday. It was Thursday. It was Thursday. It was Thursday. Listen carefully. Thursday, I gave her quickly. $100. Friday, I received $10,000. You follow me? I gave her $100. Thursday, around five or six. Friday, at 10, 33, 33 I received Ten thousand, no, ten thousand and seven hundred dollar. I did not work for it. I did not toil for it. Like I did nothing. When they gave me the check in my hand, free, eh? You don't have nothing to pay for it. You don't sell nothing. It's free. I went to the bank. I said, the devil. <laughs> you are a liar. I arrived to the bank. I was with the children. I said, I must cash the money now. now. <laughs> oh, I will not wait. Those who wait upon the Lord. I am run upon the Lord. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 uh. Because you remember last Sunday I told you about uh, Duncan. Amen. What happened to him? There was a check that was written for him that was stuck somewhere. He, uh, so I said, I will not wait. I went to the bank. I said, Cash that the money now. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Listen carefully. My mom, I've always preached to her the gospel. But regardless of my relationship with God, regardless of the word I know, regardless of what I do, God used a mouth to tell me one thing. You see, Nathan did not give the promise to Bathsheba. She, he reminded the word of God and she moved immediately. And immediately, a son was enthroned king. Are you following? Do you believe that this is coincidence? That last Sunday we talked about it, and then Friday, suddenly I received 10,000? It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. You put in motion what God said he will do, and it shall happen because he, he is the one who said he will do. So two principles to finish with that. When you are single, you enforce the promise in where you are. But when you are married... You enforce the promise with your rib. Are you following? Let me explain again. Un unless a house is together, amen, they cannot build. Amen? Amen. Unless a house is together, even the devil is together to do evil. Am I right? The enforcing of the promise of God are comprised in where you act. If you are single, you enforce it until you receive your marriage land. But if you are married, listen carefully, you enforce it with your rib. Are you following? Because the multiplication is based upon your numbers. Lord, I am coming in. The son Solomon, I did not have him by the Holy Spirit. I had him with David. And that association has brought him. And you have called him to be on the throne. But for Solomon to be on the throne, David and Bathsheba must agree. Does it make sense? Even though... God promised it. It did not happen until David and Bathsheba agreed. Do not allow the enemy to steal your promises. Do not allow. Do not allow the enemy to steal your promises, and talk you into foolishness. Because before the enemy even knew, when God said, I will cause you to rise, I will cause you to advance, I will cause you to be established, it was not the will of the enemy. It was the will of God. And it is the will of God. So today, the 31st of December, I said 31st, why? Because we're entering that new year. And every year does not go back. Are you following? Before Jesus, they were counting year back. <laughs> Amen. They were starting with 4,000 and they go down, 3,000, 30. But after Jesus, they count the year forward. You are in the time of Christ and the multiplication of Christ. He has paid it all so you'll be able to receive your due. Say, Lord, you paid it all 
so I receive my due. I receive my due in the name of Jesus Christ. Entering a new year has to sound in your mind as something added on you. Now, it's not problem added on you. Amen? It's not trouble added on you. It's not lack added on you. God adds on you prosperity. He adds on you peace. He adds on you joy. He adds on you salvation. He adds on you advancement. He adds on you multiplication. You are to enforce the promises. You out to enforce the promises. Let the voice of God, let the word of true of the Lord touch your heart, touch your mind, touch your soul, and boost you and catapult you into a place where you will refuse to give any portion no more to the enemy. So that uh, you will possess the land that he has promised unto you. Possess what he has promised unto you. And God will connect you. And those connections, they will bring the cedar that is needed for you to be able to continually build the temple of the Lord. Father, I bless your name, Lord God, for what you have provided. I bless you, Lord God, for all that you do in a, even now. I thank you, Lord God, that you have established this day to be Exodus. I thank you, Lord God, even as we exalt, Lord God, from all limitation. We exalt from the Goshen land. We exalt from every place, Lord God, where we do not see fulfillment. Where we do not see fulfillment. We pray, Lord God, even today, the manifestation of your word take form, take place in the physical in the now. Because what you said is what you do. What you do is what you have said. Let it be accomplished. Let it be established. Let it be prospered even in the now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.